Hi there. I'm Luke the Apostate. Welcome to my channel. I'm an atheist. I didn't always used to be an atheist. I used to be a fundamentalist Christian. I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian household. Spent my youth in the church. Spent my adolescence in the church. Spent a great deal of my adulthood in the church. Went so far as to get a master's degree in theological studies from a reasonably well-respected, academically accredited seminary in the Midwest. Uh, and then I became an atheist, uh, which is not what my plan was, and that master's degree is basically a master's degree in, you know, ancient Near Eastern Iron Age fan fiction. Uh, so not quite as useful as I'd hoped. But when I became an atheist, and I'll have a story about that in some other video, I benefited greatly from the YouTube atheist community, um, partly in, in, in a deprogramming sense. I had a lot of habits of thought and assumptions that I felt I needed to re-examine, and the atheist community was perfectly willing to explain why Christian assumptions were wrong, uh, which I greatly value. Um, and so guys like uh, Matt Dillahunty or uh, Aaron Ra, of course Dawkins and Hitchens in the, in the Four Horsemen, uh, YouTube stuff, but they aren't really exactly active YouTubers as much. Uh, but guys like... Um, uh, Dark Matter 2525, uh, Jacqueline Glenn, actually, Amazing Atheist, The Thinking Atheist, they all really helped me, and I felt, um, obviously, a great deal of gratitude, but I wanted to be able to contribute back to the community, and now, in, in some ways, I have done that. I've got some Patreon accounts that I'm contributing to because I really value the continuing work of, of some of those guys, and I just... Okay, right off the bat, thank you guys, if any of you uh, watch this. If anybody if anybody watching this has uploaded videos to YouTube about atheism, whether or not I've seen that specific video, thank you. I was a fundamentalist Christian. Your videos did not convert me from or deconvert me from Christian fundamentalism to atheism, but once I'd made that switch, videos like that really helped me smoothly and effectively change my thinking habits uh, in a way that, that I'm going to benefit from for the rest of my life. Uh, so thank you. Now, obviously, I, I, I value and, and, and would like to contribute back to the atheist community, but <clears throat> also, quite clearly, the YouTube atheist community is fairly healthy and uh, doesn't need, you know, yet another random YouTuber who just thought atheism was really cool and wants to post a video about it. But I was watching some more of Matt Dillahunty's stuff, and I deeply respect him, and I have no ability to, to do the things he does. But he mentioned a couple times that he doesn't have a degree in this stuff. And I've seen some other... I don't think Matt Dillahunty needs a degree. He's doing great. Uh, and I've noticed some other YouTubers who have said um, that they didn't understand why a Christian would say, you know, one thing or another thing. You know, it, it, they thought that a Christian was making a massive non sequitur during a, a debate or during a video um, where they made a two minute aside about, you know, the dry bones in Isaiah, um, which seemed to have no meaning in, in the context of the conversation. Uh, and I realized that <clears throat> I did have something that I could offer and I hope to be able to offer it, and that's basically translation. So, Let's take one example, um, the literal meaning of the Bible. And this, this one, I've seen video evidence that this annoys a lot of atheists because a Christian will say, I believe in the literal meaning of the Bible. And an atheist will say, you, you mean the literal part where God literally says, sacrifice a child? And then the Christian will say, no, 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 not obviously that part. And the atheist will say, well, what about the point where the... Hello, cat. Um... This is my cat. He is Fitz. He is nice. Uh, he is going down. So, so the Christian will say, uh, obviously I don't mean the literal part where God says to sacrifice children. The atheist will say, what about the literal part where God says, um, smash baby's head opens on, baby's heads open on rocks. And the Christian will say, well, obviously not that part. That's not the literal meaning. And the atheist will say, uh, I'm afraid you and I have very different meanings of the, of the word literal. And they do. Because literal is a jargon term. There's a 400-year interpretational history using literal. I mean, it 
didn't used to be the word literal. Literal refers to this this interpretive method that's been that's been in vogue for the last few centuries. Uh, but if you don't know that, um, you just say literal, and there's a whole bunch of confusion. A lot of Christians don't even know that literal means in an interpretive method. They think it means literal meaning of the Bible, and they get confused when atheists say, well, that's not literal, because the Christian thinks that what they're doing is the literal meaning of the Bible. So, part of what I'd like to do is interpret those terms of jargon, those technical terms uh, that Christians use, knowing them or not, um, that confuse atheists and agnostics and probably Muslims and Hindus and everybody that's not using their, you know, massive subtext, their context that they don't really expressly uh, describe. <clears throat> I can, you know, I have a master's degree in fanfic. I kind of actually know where those terms are coming from. So I, I think I can help with that. And the other thing I, I, I think I might be able to do <clears throat> is... Christians have a cultural context as well as a, as, as a theological context. So a Christian will, in the middle of, of giving some big video response to something, will will just take two minutes and start talking about dry bones. And of course, that's a reference to the Old Testament. And there's you know the dry bones, flesh gets on them, and they rise from the dead, and and, and this sort of thing. Um, and, you know, an atheist who spent a long time in fundamentalist churches, like Matt Dillahunty, will understand the context that that's coming from, and he'll be able to respond to that. Um, so I don't think I'm going to necessarily be able to do what Matt Dill Dillahunty does in those situations, but Matt Dillahunty's sort of focus isn't really on unpacking for atheist audiences what Christians are talking about. He's doing more of a of a of a explaining thought processes and, and why one argument works and another one doesn't, which I really value. Um, I also value the fact that he's left some room for other people to explain things. Um, with, I mean, if he was willing to explain everything, I would just shut up and listen. Uh, but he doesn't have time, so I'll try to fill in. <clears throat> and there's there's cultural context. There's certain phrases that Christians will use that may or may not pass in casual conversation that um, an atheist wouldn't catch. Or if an atheist noticed that it was a weird phrase to use, they might not, without a you know personal history in, in fundamentalist Christianity, they might not understand the, 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 the meaning that the phrase is fraught with, the, the multiple layers of association of, you know, well, okay, obviously they're referring to you know, Jesus and the resurrection, but they're also referring to, uh, you know, church reformation, and they're also referring to spiritual renewal, and they're also referring to all this stuff, and, you know, and in, in that context, this also means that they're signaling to other Christians that the person they're talking to is a spiritual enemy that they have to fight, and by fight, they mean pray for and, 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 and disagree with and argue on the internet, and, and this sort of thing, and, and, and an atheist who didn't spend a lot of time in a church setting, uh, is just going to hear dry bones and go, and they're making a weird Old Testament reference, whatever, and continue onward. And that atheist will probably make a very good argument, um, <clears throat> but be confused by the weird response they get from Christians. Uh, so that's the other thing I'd like to be able to do, is some cultural unpacking. So that's the end of my introduction video. It's coming in under 10 minutes, which is great, because I talk too much. Uh, but I, I, I hope to be able to do videos on a regular, if not frequent, basis. Um, I've got a, a list of topics I'd like to be addressing soon. Uh, this, however, is my introduction, and thank you.